Are you still filming your vertical videos for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts, holding your camera like this? Whether it's for clients or for your social media accounts, there is a better way, and I'm gonna show you how. Hello, you beautiful humans, it is Gem Lang here, and welcome to another video. Well, finally, we've got some spring sunshine here in Adelaide, Australia. I thought we'd try something a little bit different for today's video, and I have found this beautiful tree, which unfortunately, someone spray painted it. I don't get it, why would you spray paint such a beautiful tree. It just, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, let's talk about vertical videos in today's video. Whether you like it or not, vertical video is here to stay. Instagram Reels, TikTok and YouTube Shorts, they are absolutely booming. And with YouTube recently announcing that they are going to be including YouTube Shorts in the creator program in 2023, it is very exciting. So they're absolutely embracing it. Whether you're filming vertical video for yourself or for your clients, it is tough. It definitely has its challenges. So I have found a really good workflow, which I wanna share with you because it is saving me a lot of time. And today I'm gonna share those three tips with you in today's video. So why don't we talk about the problems first up with filming vertically? Well, the biggest problem that you're going to have is that once you film it vertical, that's it, you're stuck in vertical. There is no way to be able to repurpose that in post in your edit to be able to be horizontal. I mean, you can and crop in, but the problem is you're losing so much resolution and it's just, you don't do it. You don't do it unless you are absolutely desperate. But the problem is your footage is gonna end up really bad as if you're watching an old DVD or CRT TV. The other problems that you have is that having to do multiple takes, if you need something that is done vertically and horizontal, then potentially you're going to need to film it more than once. And it is time consuming having to repurpose and reset everything. You just don't wanna do it. The other problems are that you've got lens distortion, especially when you're filming on wider lenses, as you can see here, my hand, it's like 10 times bigger than what it is when you're filming on a wide angle lens. That's a pain. And I have tried filming in so many different ways. I've even tried putting another camera on the side of my main camera vertically with my phone and with other cameras. It's just, it's a nightmare. Okay, enough of the problems, let's get into the solutions. What is my workflow for filming vertical videos? Well, first up, I've got two disclaimers before I give you my three tips. Disclaimer number one, film horizontally. That is the way cameras are designed. So that's the way to use it. It's the same if using your phone. Make sure you're filming horizontally. Disclaimer number two, film in the highest resolution that your camera or phone is capable of. It should be able to film in 4K and that is the best way of being able to get the best out of your vertical videos. Now, before I go into my three tips, if I could ask you a massive favor while I'm giving the tips to you, if you could just hit the subscribe and the like button as it really makes a difference so I can keep bringing these videos to you. Okay, tip number one is aspect marker. Aspect marker is an option in your video camera that'll allow you to be able to set the ratio guides on your screen. Newer cameras now are coming out with the option of nine by 16, like with the FX3, you'll be able to do that where you can see the vertical line. So when you're filming, you'll be able to see those aspect markers, also known as display marker. Now, if your camera doesn't have that option, you can also use the option of rule of thirds grid. Here's my tip number two, yes, framing your shot. Now you've got your aspect marker in the middle to show your nine by 16, or if you're using your rule of thirds, you'll be able to see what works in your wide shot, what works in the center. So whether you're filming a person or a product or a drink or whatever it is that you're filming, you'll be able to frame accordingly. And then when it comes to the edit, you'll be able to put that together. Speaking of the edit, Let's jump back into the studio. So my tip number three, hang on a sec. Oh, that's better. So my tip number three is guides. While you're doing the edit in your video editing program, if you set up guides while you're doing your edit on your wide footage, then that'll make it so much easier for when you start doing your edit for your vid vertical video. So I'm using Premiere Pro, but you can do it in whatever video editing program you're using, whether it's DaVinci or Final Cut, you'll be able to do this. So why don't we jump in and I'll show you. Okay, so I've already set up the footage in a 4K resolution timeline or sequence. I've put in all the footage there and I've already done my selects, but 
even before I would do my selects, I would actually do this. So what you do is you need to click on the rulers, but if your rulers aren't there, you just click on the spanner and go to show rulers. And while you're there, show guides as well. Now you right click on the ruler and go add guide, change that position number to 33. Make sure your units is on percent and hit left, press OK. And see now you've got your first guide. Now you repeat that again. So go right click on your ruler, add guide on right, 33. And there we go. Now you've got your center for your aspect marker for where your vertical video will be. Okay, so now you've done your edit for your wide format. You now create a sequence for your Instagram reel. So you go new sequence. Now I've already got a template made up, but let's make one from scratch so you can make a preset yourself. So you go digital SLR 1080. Now in my case, I'm using 25 frames a second. It's based in Australia at using power. Now the best format for uploading Instagram reels is at 1080 HD, because if you upload your footage at 4K, the compression is really harsh and it will drop your quality. And of course you want your videos to be looking as best as they can. So let's use that option. So we'll use a 1080. Now we need to change the ratio here. So see how it's 16 by nine. So we basically need to flip these. So we go 1080 and 19 by 20. Now we can save this preset. So I've already saved one, so I'm not gonna do it again, but you can save that and call it whatever you like, Instagram Reels 9x16 HD, for example, and then it will always be there. You won't need to go back and recreate it every time. So let's just give this uh, the sequence a name. Okay. Okay, so here we've got our fresh timeline now. Now we don't need those guides anymore, so we can clear them. So just click back on the spanner and go clear guides and they're gone. Now we'll go back to our footage. We'll highlight that, copy all of it and then paste. And we'll just zoom in. Now the next step is just to make sure that your framing is all correct. I prefer to do it manually rather than using the auto reframe option in Premiere Pro because it does its AI tracking with moving depending on where the action is in your frame. I prefer to have control over that. So I don't do it that way. I just do it manually myself and I actually find this is actually quicker than using the auto reframe. So with your motion, this is where you change where you want the footage to sit on your vertical video. Now the scaling, because it's going from 4K to HD, we've actually got a little bit of room to play with. So the, the scale, the lowest that you can go to is 89%. So now you can see we've just got a little bit more there. And what you can do is you can go copy that motion, right click, go copy highlight all the remaining footage in your timeline and paste. Now all of that will now be at the maximum scale for your frame. Then when you go through, if you need to adjust it, if you're not happy where it's sitting, so say for example, I want a little bit more of those cherry blossoms there, you just move your position over a little bit. So there you go, that is my workflow and tips for when it comes to vertical video, whether you're doing it for yourself, for your Instagram reels, for TikTok, or for YouTube shorts, or for your clients, I hope I'll be able to save you time with my tips. Are you doing any of these already? Or if you got some tips of your own that you would like to share, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for subscribing and hitting the like button too. My name's Gem Lang and I'll see you in the next video.